Hey YouTube, John here. Today we're talking about hot things. No, not those kind of hot things. I'm talking about peppers. But have you ever wondered what makes peppers hot? Well today I'm going to be sitting down and turning up the heat to answer that question. The secret behind the pepper's heat begins and ends with a group of chemicals called capsaicinoids. And especially the most prominent of these capsaicinoids, capsaicin. Capsaicin accounts for about 70% of a pepper's spiciness and has some pretty wicked effects on the human body. And what better way of showing you these effects than by experiencing them firsthand and letting you watch? Meet my little friend, the habanero pepper. Until the year 2000, this was considered to be the hottest pepper in the world. And yes, I'm about to eat it. For science. <coughs> this is the moment I suddenly regretted everything I'd just done. Here. The hiccups. No, you did not. Holy <laughs> oh. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, peppers get a majority of their kick from a chemical called capsaicin. Capsaicin is a is an alkaline, hydrophobic, odorless, and colorless compound produced by all peppers in the genus. Capsicum. Capsaicin works by binding to a specific type of pain neuron in your body called, <coughs> called a TRPV1 receptor. This binding triggers a cellular response in which ion channels open, causing calcium to rush into your cells. This influx of calcium causes an intense neural response. The thing is, is that these TRPV1 receptors are responsible for detecting heat and abrasion and are normally only activated when temperatures exceed 45 degrees Celsius. So by eating capsaicin containing foods, you're essentially tricking your body into thinking that you're on fire. But why would a plant produce a chemical that does this? The answer is actually quite clever. See us mammals have molars that we used to grind up food when we eat it. This means that if we were to eat a pepper, the seeds would probably get crushed, which isn't a really good thing for a plant trying to reproduce. So capsaicin is thought to have evolved as a de defense mechanism to stop mammals from eating peppers. Birds, however, don't have the same sensitivity in their TRPV1 receptors, which allows them to eat the fruit of a pepper plant and then spread the seeds wherever their droppings land. So now you know why peppers are hot, but do you know how their heat's measured? Well, this is done using the Scoville heat scale. Basically, this scale works by measuring how much a pepper's extract can be diluted in a sugar water solution before it can no longer be detected by a panel of tasters. Though in recent years, high performance chromatography has been used to get more accurate Scoville heat ratings. Just to give you some benchmarks, a bell pepper like this represents about a zero on the Scoville heat scale, meaning that it has no noticeable spiciness. A jalapeno comes in at about 5,000 Scoville heat units, and the habanero pepper that I just ate registers at about 350,000 Scoville heat units. But that's nothing compared to the world's hottest pepper. This pepper, the Trinidad Maruga scorpion, tops out at over 2 million on the Scoville heat scale. But outside the plant kingdom, humans have found some even crazier ways of intensifying capsaicin. For example, Law enforcement grade pepper spray clocks in at over 5 million Scoville heat units, whereas pure capsaicin registers at around 16 million SHUs. And that may be the limit for capsaicin, but there are some structurally similar molecules that can also bind to our TRPV1 receptors and cause an even stronger response. The most terrifying of these structural analogs is called resiniferatoxin. This is a compound produced by some cacti that's 1,000 times more potent than capsaicin. And resiniferatoxin doesn't play around. Whereas capsaicin only allows enough calcium into a cell to cause a painful neural response, resiniferatoxin causes so much calcium to rush into a cell that it bursts, causing immediate cell death. Okay, I know that's scary, but let's get back to the problem at hand. How to put out the fire in your mouth once you eat a pepper. First things first, don't use water. After all, capsaicin is a hydrophobic or non-water soluble compound. So by throwing water on it, you're pretty much just gonna spread it around your mouth. As far as real solutions go, Milk with a high fat content is probably going to be your best option. This is because the fat in the milk is going to help to dissolve the lipid soluble capsaicin, whereas a certain protein in the milk, called casein, is actually going to act as a detergent, which breaks up the capsaicin molecules. Okay, it went away. Now it's back. And if you don't have any milk on hand, any lipid or dairy based product will probably do the trick. Here. I have olive oil. Some ice cream. And some whipped cream. Extra creamy.
and Apollos fails, just chew on some ice cubes. The extreme cold should counteract some of the burn that you're feeling. Heck, it makes me feel better. Well, hopefully this video has taught you a thing or two about peppers. Subscribe to my channel if you learned something, and make sure to tune in for weekly videos. Also, if you have a chili head in your life who you think would like this video, feel free to share it. And until next time, never stop learning.